So today's session is about the usage uh, and a deep dive on the usage of um, Mobile Express, which is the uh, mobile tool of the Dartfish uh, product range. So there's, uh, first of all, a couple of slides that we'll go through to give you a bit of context. And then I will uh, display the screen of an iPad so that we can have a real look at how things look, uh, look like. Uh, in the application, actually, because that's what we, we're here for today. So first of all, a quick introduction to the mobile apps of Dartfish, because there's more than one. And we'll, we, quickly, we will quickly cover these uh, three apps, which are available. Then we'll have a first use case to a certain extent, which is a review of the main functionalities of the video analysis app that we have at Dartfish. Then we will quickly have a look at how uh, this app can be used into the Dartfish ecosystem. Um, and then the last section would be a short, very short section about what we call the branded application, which is somehow a sister of the app we're going to be looking at. But it's a, it's a, it's an app that was designed for large organization and which facilitates access to the content on the on the TV. Right. So just quickly a reminder for those of you who are new to, to Dartfish or to, to video analysis in general, but we tend to review uh, video analysis and split video analysis, uh, the video analysis process into three steps. Uh, the first one is clearly linked to the capture, uh, mostly of the images, the video, uh, but also sometimes on data. And uh, this will be basically the footage will be the base for the analysis that we will do later in the Dartfish tools. Then there is a second phase, which is obvious, is the analysis, right? Uh, so here we have developed several different analysis tools, uh, one of which we will have a look at today, which is the Mobile Express. And finally, the last stage is that you can have the best analysis, but you need to make sure that it's uh, shared with the right person and at the right moment, of course. So this concept of capture, analyze, share, is uh, the base of the work workflow process for the video analysis uh, that we use at Dartfish. So Dartfish Express. Uh, so as as mentioned, Dartfish Express is uh, the mobile application. is one of the mobile applications that uh, that we produce at the Dartfish that we distribute. So. It's, it's the application which is associated with the Dartfish ecosystem and we'll, we'll see later on what that means exactly. There is two editions of this app Dartfish Express. One is, and you can see the icon is fairly different. One is the mobile application, we call it standalone with reduced functionalities. Uh, it's got this kind of Dartfish logo with a red eye to a certain extent, that's how we can define it. And the second one, which we're mostly going to talk about today, exclusively going to talk about today, is the mobile application with the full functionalities and the complete integration in the ecosystem, as well as with a personal storage that you get of 50 gig gigabyte in the cloud, right? And that logo or the logo of this MyDartfish application has the yellow uh, dot in the middle. Quickly, if you want to get those up, um, the, the distribution channel, uh, well, you get them in uh, both of them. You can buy them in the Google Play Store or in the App Store, um, clearly. And we also sell the MyDartfish Express on our website, whereas the, the other one, the Dartfish Express, is not sold on our website. Uh, this is something which is exclusively sold um, through the, the App Stores. So today, as I said, we will be focusing on the MyDartfish mobile. So what does, does this kind of plan, we call it a plan, include? Well, it includes actually three things. So this, uh, this MyDartfish Express actually, yeah, MyDartfish mobile actually includes, first of all, the mobile app for the video analysis, which is at the top, right? Then there is a personal cloud, uh, 50 gigabyte, gigabyte, which is included in the plan. And then there's a second app, which is also included in the plan, uh, which is specifically, design, specifically designed for tagging. So today we'll do video analysis, uh, uh, sort of a kind of motion technical analysis, and tagging can be done with the other app, uh, which is also part of the Dartfish ecosystem. So clearly today we will focus on the first line, which is a Dartfish mobile app for video analysis. 
last uh, slide before we move to the actual usage of the tool. So I've split this this presentation, if you wish, in two contexts. The first context is is here. It's the context of the app itself with the cloud, no connection whatsoever with any other Dartfish solutions or platforms. A typical use case for this would be like a tennis instructor, a fitness coach, a ski instructor, a gymnastic coach, right? So uh, sort of an independent worker who wants to have a tool that uh, he or she can use um, on the field, do some analysis, basic analysis, store the analysis. So here we, we got a few examples in our customer base that um, of customers that are using only this part of our ecosystem. And this is definitely something which, uh, which, is, which is absolutely fine. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm using an iPad, uh, right? So the screen that you see now uh, is the mirroring of my iPad, which is next to me. Uh, in this iPad, you will uh, you will see that yes, there is the My Dot Fish mobile application, uh, which we're going to be opening. So here's what happens when you open the the My Dot Fish mobile, right? So quickly to review a bit uh, how that looks like. So you see here. There's a menu section here where you see pretty much the same vertically, the same uh, sections, if you wish, uh, than at the top. So you have my videos, my collections, favorite and subscriptions, and you also have a settings, right? So maybe we start with settings, not very long, but in the settings, you will be able to define a couple of things that will personalize this environment for you. So the first one uh, is clearly well, start from the bottom, the measurement unit, right? You can select whether you want meters and a whole bunch of uh, different uh, units. Um, that's the first thing. Then you can decide whether you want the app to actually use the mobile network data, right? So this is the switch here, um, um, which depending on which price plan you are, or if you have a 4G connection, you may not want to have uh, full traffic onto the cellular uh, cellular mobile, depending on your plan. And the last and the most important thing is the camera setting. So here you see we have a camera setting at 70, 720 lines at 30 frames per, per second. But if you click here, you will see options. So those are all the options that you can use in terms of settings for your camera. Uh, and this is linked to your hardware. So here, typically, this iPad is um, is not the latest one. But if you were featuring a latest iPad or an iPhone, you could you could have a 4K quality at 120 frames per second. So here, um, I'll, I'll stick with the standard and recommended, which is set seven, 720 at 30 frames per second. Uh, we'll stick with this. But you. You know, all these are options which are supported by the app. So if you knew, if you do sport with typically very fast movements, uh, you may want to select the 120 frame per second option. Or if you, if you, uh, but that will of course make, as a consequence, you will have bigger files. Um, but then you will have more granularity when it comes to analysis. Okay, so let's stick now with, with, uh, the 720 and uh, 30 frames per second. So here, now that we've reviewed the menu, you see that we, we are in the kind of homepage, if you wish, of, uh, of the application. So here you see there's a couple of, um, couple of videos which are already stored here. So right here, uh, you, you have here, for example, one which we'll use later, it's called Swiss Key, uh, Swiss Key School Demo Video. We have here, couple of basketball video, we have some kayak video. So this is basically, as it indicates at the top here, my videos. Those are all the videos that are available for the use with the application. As you can see in this video, there is every time there's a sort of a, a quick highlight at the top, right? Then there is a title. So for example, the first video is called A versus B. Then there is a date this video was created and there's a small icon. And this icon you can see here, uh, it says cloud, right? Or oh, it says it is it is indicated that this video is actually stored in the cloud. Whereas the Swiss Ski School demo video, you see this icon is more of a small mobile phone. So this icon, this video is actually stored on my iPad, on the device. So this icon kind of give you the indication where these videos are stored. 
And there is a third icon, which is, for example, the one on this video, where you see actually the cloud and the small mobile device, um, which is linked to the fact that actually this video is mirrored between the cloud and my device. So it's locally stored and it's mirrored on the cloud. Whereas uh, when there is only the mobile, then it's only locally stored. And when there is only the cloud, it's only stored on the cloud, which means that you know, regardless of where it is, I can play this video, right? So, for example, the A versus Bay, if I go on it, I'll, it will play. It will download the video uh, from, from the cloud and play it. So, not an issue. It's just a question of storage. Um, now, for each of these video, you see here, for example, there is possibility to work on the title. Right, so here uh, it's called A versus B. You can change the title. Uh, there is a, a, a sort of a personalization option. So you can see here also where it's stored. So again, the little cloud. Um, you can delete it, of course, with a little trash can. So you can manage your videos from this uh, from this uh, tray. Now the second section is called My Collection, and here we're getting into basically. Uh, the management of all your videos, right? So here you see two things. You see all the collections or consider collections as somehow folders, you know, where you can sort your videos. And here you see that I have several collections. I have, first of all, a local collection, which is of course uh, the collection which is only stored on my iPad. So if I click on this one, I will see that I see this Swiss Ski School demo video, which we saw reason before is only stored on my iPad. It's not on the cloud. All the others, and you can see the icon for the folder is different. All the others are actually stored in the cloud. So if I go on the skiing, you see here, there's three videos. They're all stored on the cloud. Uh, in the test video, they're all stored on the cloud. There is a Cleveland Cavalier versus Golden Gate State Warriors game NBA. So that's a full um, game of basketball stored on the cloud into this test collection. So these collections, you can create as many as you as you like uh, on your cloud, up to 50 gigabyte, and store your video there. For now, we'll skip the favorite and subscriptions menu. And I think we, it's time to get into the, the real stuff. So the first thing that we want to do with this app is obviously try to capture some image. So you have to imagine that you have your phone or you have your iPad, uh, you're on the field, and now you decide that you want to capture um, some video. So the obvious thing is to click on the small camera icon, which is at the top there, right? And there you go. So I have here a PC running with some hockey game. So you see the screen, red dot, very easy. I push on the red dot and it starts the recording, right? So the quality of the image is probably not that good because I have a computer, but here we have a hockey game um, being streamed on this computer. And there you go, I'm now fil filming this hockey game. Right, so pretty straightforward, nothing really fancy, okay? So I'm done, I'm done with the capturing now, right? So what happens is that obviously, if I go back to the menu, I will see now that I have a new video, which is called, which just has a date for now, right? That's called April 30, 4, 17 p.m. Uh, I can see the icon, it's actually only stored on my device for now. So I can give it another name. Uh, so here, I will go there and I say, this is called my hockey video. Right. Um, okay. So and now I, I know it's locally stored, but you know maybe maybe first of the first thing that I may want to do is actually put it, make sure that it's duplicated on the cloud. Right. So the re the way to do this is to click on these three little dots here, and then you can move this video to a collection. And here the app will actually propose you all the existing collection. You can create a new collection, but here. Let's use this webinar collection that we have here. So I'll put it on this webinar collection, move. So what's gonna happen is that now uh, this, this video will be synchronized directly and you can see the, the percentage here, it's 14%, 15%. So now the video is being moved or duplicated in the cloud 
collection that I have selected, but it will stay on the device um, as well. So the icon ultimately will be cloud and device synchronized. So we're 94% down, 100%, yeah, double icon. And you see here at the bottom, there is this um, uh, availability below the, below the, the screen here, there's this availability. You can decide to have it synchronized or not synchronized here. So this video, if I say it's synchronized, then any work, anything that I will do on this video on my device uh, will be automatically synchronized with the cloud. Right, so I will leave it for an available offline. Uh, this also means that there will be permanently a copy of this video on my uh, iPad, even if it's not connected to the network. Okay, um, so uh, now uh, we will now sort of go into uh, into the, okay, there's one more functionality that you may want to see here into when you're into my videos, you can you can sort the videos in a different way, right? So uh, very easy to find, usually the most recent one, having the most recent is, is, is easiest because you see always the latest video that you've that you've taken. Okay, so I think this is this is very simple for the capture, right? Um, so what I propose now is that we uh, we move to the analysis part, right? So you've captured this video, or you may have downloaded it from your from your cloud. Um, now let's get into basically the analysis part. So to go into the analysis part, you just select the video and you click on it. You will see it opens, right? In this environment, uh, you see here a couple of things. At the bottom, you have um, let me play the video for a bit here. Uh, we have images. So you have here at the bottom uh, two different ways to navigate through the video. So the first way is this uh, is this white circle that you have here, right? Where you can actually move throughout the whole video very rapidly, right? So that's the first way to move throughout the video very fast. And the second way is below the, what we call the is basically more of a precise adjustment, adjustment movement, right? So here you can move through the exact part of the video that you want to have, that you want to review, and that you want to, to, to view. Of course, you can play this video with the traditional kind of um, uh, icon of the triangle. You can play this video at here at the bottom. Here I am half of the speed, maybe one fourth of the speed, or even one eighth of the speed. Right, and still uh, during this time, you can play around with the jog wheel if you want to move around uh, and, and and go to another to another section. Okay, there we go. So let's get some skiing. All right, so here one eighth of the speed. All right, so here the first tools that you have are these functionalities to go back and forth and precisely frame by frame by frame on. On the video uh, that you have playing on your mobile express so that's already a, 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 a sort of an analysis tool a first level analysis tool then um, the second if you wish family of analysis tool that you have is basically drawing tools on the video so here uh, you see there's a, a small menu at the at the uh, right hand side uh, where I can go and select different video analysis tool. So I can do arrows, free, uh, free draws, angles, I can measure distances, I can measure time. Uh, that will be done on the video. So for example, you can do some drawings directly on the video. So what has happened is that when you resume the video, the drawing will remain on the video where you positioned it, right? So probably not the most relevant and useful uh, tools when you have a video with a moving frame, as it is the case here, right? Could be a very useful tool when you have a fixed camera that your iPad is always, or your, 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 your camera is always at the same uh, location to film. This means that you could be a line, it could be a, a reference line, it could be a circle, it could be something that you always want to keep on the video. Right, um, but these are, I'd say, not probably not the best uh, tools for the analysis uh, to have the drawings on the video. Now, if we take, let's say, here the sequence where we have the skier, because another option is, of course, to have some analysis done done on what we call a still shot. 
right? So that's a frozen picture, if you wish, at one point in time, you say, hey, this is the, the this is the part that I'm interested in. So for example, the skier, right? Let's, let's, let's go at slow speed, right? There we go. Okay, he's, he's skiing at one, one eighth of the speed of the normal speed. So here I'll be able to stop exactly where uh, I feel there is something, some comments, some analysis to be performed. Uh, so let's see, next turn, maybe. I will stop at the next turn, right? So in the middle of the next turn, potentially. Hey, there we go. So we stop here, right? So I've stopped right on the image that I want to analyze on the video. And here what I'm gonna use is a small icon at the bottom right part, uh, there's small camera icon. I'll press on this camera, there you go, right? So I've, I've created, as you saw at the top, uh, what we call a still shot, which means that's a, a snapshot, a still shot at, of the video at this precise moment. And here, I'll be able to use again the analysis tools that we have here. So for example, the angle measurement, right? So we wanna measure the angle this gear is taking in this position, 49.7 degree. I can change the color. I have different tools, different drawing tools, right? Trajectory, that's gonna be red. You can play around with the purple, what we wanna do purple um, circle uh, to circle the rock and say, yeah, be careful, right? And I can then trash the, uh, remove the latest one that I've done. Um, uh, if it's not the right color, for example, and use this position that my all 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 this is is done in a kind of touch screen interface so i'm doing that with my finger on the ipad right and all these drawings will actually be only on that still shot that we have uh, defined which is a picture right so this still shot will remain as a drawing and analysis into this uh, Big position. Um, I think we've we've seen most of the screens. There's a bunch of other stuff. You can also write some stuff. Good angle, right? Um, for example. Okay. Right. So here I've done my analysis. I think this is these are the key points. Right. Uh, in yellow is the angle, 49.7 percent. The rock uh, is is circled with the with the purple stuff, and the tra potential trajectory is in red. Here I will basically confirm that I'm fine. I'm over with the addition of this still shot by clicking on this uh, on the on the tick box at the bottom right right here. There you go. So here you see in my stream video stream at the bottom. Right, I, uh, above the jog wheel, you will see that I've created this small black pin here, right, that you see here, which indicates to me that here there is something special and it's precisely that still shot that I just created. So if I now go back into the video and I play the video, you will see that maybe I go regular speed. There we go. All right, stop. At this moment of the video, as I decided that there was something interesting to show to the skiers, the still shot was created, the analysis was done, and the video will stop. So here I can do my comment, for example, to that skier precisely when it comes at the bottom, at the bottom of the slope, or, you know, and then I can resume playing the play, I can resume the video. But you see that black pin here, indicates there is something specific into this video at this point in time. So here we saw that the video was actually stopping at the still shot, right? So it, the video really froze and, and, and then it went right. But you said you can also decide that you do not want this still shot to be visible or to at least you don't want the video to stop for this still shot. And that would be the icon here at the top. Uh, that I clicked just here, and that's the auto pose off or on, right? So now I put it off, so which means that the video will play without stopping to this still shot. That's also an option if you don't want to have the video uh, somehow uh, interrupted, if you want to review the video without the analysis. And if I add the auto pose now, and that we go to the next still shot, which is here, um, then it will pause again. Right, there you go. Okay, so now you can create as many still shots as you want, as many analyses as you want into uh, a video. 
but the question is that besides this kind of black pin, which you can we can you can see here at the bottom, you know, you may want to go back to some of the still shots and only see these still shots and maybe modify these still shots, right? So the way to do this is to use the screen, uh, the, this section of the screen here, the little kind of menu here, and here you will see that you have a list of all the screenshots you have created in this video. So here I have still shot three and I have example still shot. So here you can rework those still shots. First of all, you can change the name, which I'm gonna do, right? My first example, I rename it. So now I have a still shot called my first example. If I want, I can remove it. There's a little trash can or there's this little pen. If I go on it, then this means I'm again into the edition mode. Right, so I can again modify this still shot using the the tool that we've seen before. So maybe I want to add um, uh, add something else like a, a, an arrow or something. Uh, yeah, and then again, once I'm done, I validate with the little tick box at the bottom left, or right. Sorry. So this I've now modified the still shot called my first example, uh, and and. And I have one well, can also jump to that other still shot that I had created before, which is called example still shot. Those are all uh, tools that you can use uh, for for your analysis. So you can permanently go back to your still shots using this menu, uh, and you can have as many still shots as you want um, included in 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 a video. Um, okay, so that was the kind of analysis with. Uh, the drawing tool, okay, he's quite happy, he had a good skiing. So um, now we'll move on to uh, another analysis um, uh, functionality, which is relatively uh, uh, often used. So I'll close this video, now I'm back into my home office. So you see now my Swiss Ski School demo video is actually uh, still here. It will be modified if I reopen it, then there will be the still shots that I created. Now what I'm gonna show you is a, is a which is relatively uh, often used. And for, for this uh, analysis, we're gonna take this skier as an example, right, Kostalic. So I'm gonna open the video. So here's a footage that I found on the internet, which is basically um, uh, Kostalic starting a, I think it's a slalom or something, right? So here, what I'm actually interested in, in this kind of departure phase, right? So I let him, let him back into the starting point, right? Using the jog wheel, uh, I'm actually interested in comparing the two two skiers in this starting phase. So here I'm going to use what is what we call it A versus B. Uh, this is a tool A versus B. So it's a tool. The icon is at the top uh, left here. A versus B. I'm going to click on this, and here you see that only half of the screen is now uh, uh, being used. Uh, for the, the video I loaded, and I can load another video by pressing pressing the select button here. If I do select, I will take, for example, an, another skier on the actual same the actual same uh, competition, right? Uh, the different angle at this moment in time due to the TV kind of broadcasting uh, diffusion, uh, but it's actually the same uh, the same slope, same race, same day, uh, and these are two uh, two competitors. So now I have these two images, so I can now synchronize them to make sure that, yes, we want to compare those guys uh, in a given time. So we want to be as precise as possible in the time that they actually uh, start the race. So here I will go using the jog wheel, jog wheel on the left pictures, on the right picture, sorry, and I will try to find the exact moment where he's pushing this, uh, the starting point somewhere around, let's say here. I will do the same on the other side of the other video, right? So here is still getting getting ready to start. So the time he moves forward, then I will also stop this video, there you go, right? So now I will synchronize those two video by using the little lock that you have here in the middle at the bottom, right? Here, this, here, this little lock. If I synchronize it, I close it. Now these two videos are actually only one video and I can play them and we'll see whether my synchronization has worked or not, right? So there you go. The two are starting at the same time. So yes, not not so bad. So of course, depends on on the, 
on the the different view angles that uh, that you that you have if you have the exact same view angles and you will have the exact same pictures here it's not so much the case right so here we've done our a versus b analysis very interesting so now in order to move what i want to do is i want to save this analysis uh, as one movie right now it's only two movies synchronized so once i want to do this i click on the done at the top uh, left of the screen right and the the software is asking me do you want to save this comparison yes okay then it's saving right so it's going to create a new video on my tray or with uh, with the actual two videos combined together so typical example of the RVA versus B, uh, it could be serves, could be swings, could be a lot of different things, uh, uh, could be push-ups, you know, so here. Okay, now I see I have here my video, which has just been created. Again, change the name, and we call it, well, A versus B, uh, for example. Um, right, and then I can play now this video, Right, you've seen it before, but now it's 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 one video synchronized with these two images included. I can do then exactly what I did with the previous examples, right? I can use the drawing tools on the video, right? So for example, I'll try to add the counter here, right? So from this moment in time, if I play the video, then I see the number of seconds that uh, are um, uh, from the moment I, I reset the whole thing, that's one thing. Uh, I can also do drawings as we as we saw before on the video. Uh, so this is absolutely absolutely fine. I can do, and that's probably what is interesting. If I go back to a nice moment where we see both skiers, okay, right? Say for example, now I can do exactly what I did before. Uh, I can do a still shot by pressing on the small camera, and again. As before, I can do the drawing on this still shot, do the angle measurement or whatever I want to do to compare these two skiers, for example, right? Um, and uh, uh, I can zoom in, I can zoom out, right? So all this can be done. Um, uh, for example, here, I'm done with my drawings. So here you go. I've measured these two angles for each skier. <laughs> provided it's, uh, it's making sense. And you see at the bottom here, again, I have created this small pin to indicate that I have a still shot here. All right, so if I go back again and I play the video, it will stop to this still shot precisely. So this is the typical example of, uh, which is quite used, for example, for serves in tennis, for drives or for um, uh, drives in golf, for uh, skiing as well, for uh, gymnastics, if you want to synchronize, for diving, a good example of synchronization of diving, um, uh, to, 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 to kind of work, say, well, this is your last dive, this is your latest dive, here are the difference between the two, uh, when you degroup, when you regroup, and all these kind of indications. Um, as I said, gymnastics as well. Uh, also, um, motor sports, uh, where you can have two trajectories compared next to each other. So A versus B is one of the one of the key functionalities that that, uh, that you can use. Okay, so now again, we see this A versus B that we just created is only on a mobile. As before, I can decide to put it into a collection. So I'll move it to the collection, uh, right? And I will move it to the collection skiing. Uh, there you go. Now, one thing that I can also do, because I've been doing this analysis, uh, right? So the analysis part is done. Now I I would want to share this analysis, uh, which which will actually, you know, that's where the value can, value of the software and of the, of the analysis kicks in, is when you can actually share it with someone. So, for example, this video, A versus B, that I just created, I may say, okay, I want to send it to to the two skiers potentially or to the coach or to or to a race director or to anyone that, that could be interested in, in, in getting this information. So you can then here by using the three dots on top of the of the image here, right, which I'm pointing with my mouse mouse, you can actually decide that I want to share the link. And when you select share the link, 
there is several things that you can do. Uh, you can send it via message, via mail, via Facebook. You can publish it on different options, right? Uh, uh, but let's let's say we try the email, right? So for example, here I can email this. You see immediately uh, here I'm proposed several different options. So I'll send it to myself, uh, but you know, um, automatically you will have here a link, huh? so a short link. Uh, and if you send it, then in the next minutes, uh, I will get a link that will allow me to go directly on the cloud where it's saved to review this precise video sequence, right? Because it was shared with me, I have the link, I can go and review this precise video sequence. Right? So that's the sharing of one sequence, but you can also imagine that you're interested in sharing a whole collection on your cloud. For example, uh, this skiing collection. So if you go into this collection and you say, okay, I have these skiing athletes with me, and they all use this skiing collection here, where I now have uh, four videos, I want to share this whole collection. So by clicking on the three little dots next to this uh, collection here, I will be able to share the whole collection. Right here, by sending this through an email, for example, I will give access to that person I send the link to, to not one video, but all videos in this particular folder or in this particular collection, right? Which means it could be, you could imagine you have collections for people. So if you're a tennis uh, coach or tennis instructor, you have one collection by student, and then you put the right video in each collection and the student has access to his own collection. Uh, similarly, if you do golf, that would be a very similar way. If you have uh, gymnastics, you could have different groups like trampoline, like uh, uh, whatever else. And those athletes, they, they want to have access, they may want to have access to this precise collection where all relevant videos and material is uh, for them. So that's the kind of sharing part. Then based on this, you can reuse this video from the cloud uh, directly with any browser, um, no, no limitation whatsoever. Okay, so I think we've we've done a quick uh, round around the functionalities of this first use case. Uh, so I uh, context, right? Because Dartfish uh, ecosystem, one of the key pillar of the Dartfish ecosystem is what we call a Dartfish TV. So um, we will now have a quick look at how it works when you connect this mobile application to a TV, a Dartfish TV. What's the Dartfish TV very shortly? Um, Dartfish TV is typically a, 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 a storage platform or sharing platform in the cloud, which is designed for a team or for an organization a team of, of people working together could be a tennis club team could be uh, could be um, a, a hockey team could be anything right a benefit of the dotfish TV is that the sharing the membership and the collection uh, is is much more uh, rich than what you can do in the cloud right so you can do many more things you can give access you can have paying collections you can have a lot of different things but the integration with the mobile is what we're going to be quickly looking at now. So I'll go back to, to the iPad. So TV, uh, uh, when you have a TV linked to an account, uh, for to use this software, you will need an account. So which means you're an ident identified person. Your cloud is linked to your account, right? So you can only yourself can give access to people to your cloud and only yourself can access your cloud from, from using this login. But here, you may imagine that in your organization, this login also grants you right, uh, subscription right to a Dotfish TV. So that's what you will find under this subscription here, right? So if I click on subscription, well, I have all the different platforms that I can access to. Uh, so let's say now I want to go and use the Laurent Venker demo here, right? Um, here, which is basically my Dotfish TV. So here, I'm no longer on uh, the cloud. I'm no longer on the mobile. And you see the screen, the, the, the little icon that you have here is a bit different. Here, it tells me that this video, these videos are on this Dotfish TV. They are no longer on the local 
or on the cloud. They are on the Dartfish TV. I can watch them. I can I can access them. So, for example, I have this video of the best NHL goals of all time. Right? I can play it. So it take a bit more time because it needs to download it. That should go right, ready to go. I can play it, no problem, right? As it, as if it was stored locally or 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 on my cloud. No change with this. I can rename it. I can download it, for example, locally. If I think that I want this kind of best initial goal of all times, I want to store it locally. I can use this icon here and download it because I think this is good for me and I can decide to put it local or somewhere else. That's something which is perfectly feasible. Now, um, so this is basically, if you if you wish, this is a second level of sharing, right? Uh, of course, then I can also decide to go into my videos and say this A versus B video, right? Which is here, which we created before. Hey, not only do I want to send the link to the athlete, but I want to share it with the whole federation. So here you can share the link. We saw this by using this arrow, but you can also publish it to Dotfish TV. So if I click here, uh, the software will ask me which one, which Dotfish TV do you want to you want to publish it to. So then I will I will look for my Dotfish TV if I can find it. Where is it? Laurent Vinker demo. Then he will he will ask me which. Uh, which collection? Okay, I want to. Okay, there is an alpine skiing collection. Sounds good. So here, and I'm running out of space. On I cannot do that on my channel anymore. So that's not a good example. But I could, <laughs> provided I had enough gigabytes on my Dotfish TV, I could actually publish this A versus B video onto my Dotfish TV and make it available to a wider audience. So that's the integration that we have with the Dotfish TV, um, uh, and. That's going through the subscription button. Also, you have here favorites. So here I don't have any favorites, but you can highlight some of the videos on your Dotfish TV as favorites. So things that you want to refer to frequently, and then they will appear here as, as, as being favorites for you. Um, now, quickly, let's see. Uh, once you, 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 you get the idea that you can actually get some material from Dotfish TV, I'll, I'll show you another video example, which is here. Uh, the world uh, world championship of weightlifting, um, and I will. See, what's interesting in this video is that you will see that okay, you can play it normal as as we saw, right? So here it's playing, not much happening. It's a broadcast, right? So here's the athletes, but you can see here by pressing on this button here, similarly to what we were doing before to get access to the still shot, I can get access to events. Right, and events being here at weightlifting, so these are lifts by different athletes, right? So these events that you see, all these things that are here, are moments in the video that were highlighted, that were selected, and each of these moments, and I select one, say for example, here. right? So first of all, when I select one event, we know is that this athlete is. Uh, up to Hennads, right? It's his first attempt. He is, uh, good, you know, good lift. It's, he's going to make it, right? The technique is a snatch, and the weight is 128 kilo, and the athlete group box is 61 kilo. So this is all qualifying, um, qualifying uh, um, terms or keywords for this event, right? And all these events, and there is. 61 events here. All these events I can scroll through in my iPad and I can see here it's another event. You see again 61 kilo. They all want 61 kilo because that's the 61 kilo category, right? But here you can have a look at all the events one after the other. Again, you can play them all or you can have a stop. And then more interesting, I think you can have search. So for example, if I use a little uh, and the little icon, the traditional, I can say, okay, I want to see who has lifted maybe 120. Yes, okay, so maybe not a good, a good example. There's only one who did that, 125. Nobody's done that. One twenty eight. Let's go. Okay, one twenty eight. Okay, only one. Not a good example. Anyway, you see the points. Then maybe, oh, let's go to all the athletes who did snatch, right? Which is one lifting technique. All these athletes who 
and here I have 30 event out of 61, so half of the events, and all these events are filtered according to the criteria that I've given here. I can also uh, maybe look at all the bad lifts, for example, again, bad lift, right? And Not sure if this is the right term. All the good lifts, let's say all the good lifts. And we have here again 34 events out of 61, which are filtered. I can play all these events. You get the point. You can actually filter if the video has been analyzed and tagged. We call it tagged previously. Then it's as, as it is for still shot. You see at the bottom here, all those are events. Each of these pin here is one event, which you can go directly through using this uh, this. Um, the drop-down menu on the left. Okay, so that's the benefit of using video which has been tagged and stored on a Dartfish TV. Typically, uh, Team Sport would tag videos, but as you can see here with weightlifting, also makes sense to have some tagging to identify the athletes the moment this is happening, what he's lifting and the technique he's using. So that's one way to go and, and search through material. Um, what else do we have? Okay, now quickly, uh, I think it's it's in, important. We're running out of time, so I'll take another two minutes uh, where I can introduce you the third concept to a certain extent. We've seen here the Mobile Express, but we've also, for large organization, we have developed a branded app concept. So I'll now quit this Mobile Express, and the branded app, to a certain extent, is mimicking a lot of the mimicking of a lot of the functionalities that we have in the app, except that it's relying heavily on keywords and events as um, events classification to actually make access to the to the videos easier. So here you see at the top, right? Uh, so the, the, the actual menu here, you will find it relatively similar. You can do your settings, you can do a lot of the different things. You have the sorting functionalities, right? But here you have different ways at the top here, different ways to look into the events of this um, that you find in this video, right? So for example, here, I don't know, this video that we have here, let's play it, right? Um, here you see, as we saw for the for the weightlifting in this video, we we have 133 events. So those are the names of the skiers, right? So for example, here's Voltaire. We have where he comes from, what's his uh, name, surname, and all that stuff, right? So we have 133 sequences in this event, right? Um, you can play them one after the other, but the interest is also the ability to actually go and look directly through these events. Uh, using these menus at the top. So for example, let's go into age category, right? Age category, I want to see in 2020. Age category in 2020, I have these different age categories, right? So let's take uh, KU12 here with 41 videos, right? And then I can filter through the club they're coming from. So say uh, Alpine Bull, for example, and then I have the name of the athlete. Right, so here I will see the three events from uh, this Mateo Quinones, uh, who is uh, in the age category we selected in this precise uh, uh, season. And 2020, right, you have here three events. The first event here is in Leza, which is a ski resort. There's, there's Manche 1, Manche 2, and that's the race 5. So all, all the sequences meeting the filtering criteria that you have are reachable through this branded app. Now, the construction and the structure of this branded app is very similar to the Mobile Express, right? And typically, branded app are designed for relatively large organizations which have a lot of content and which want to make access extremely easy to the whole video content that they have. You can try yourself. Uh, it's a relatively big app, but one of our customers has decided to make the full uh, collections that he has public, so that's International Judo Federation. And here you see uh, it's, uh, it's got uh, 58,000 video here, right? And you can fill them again by athlete, by weight, by competition, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, due to the size of the video database, it's a bit slower than the one I showed you previously, but here you can really filter. You can access this, um, download this uh, branded app from the IGF on 
any of the Play Stores, Google Store or, or App Store and use it. You don't need a login to access this data. They decided to make this data public. So you can play around. This is probably one of the good examples of a branded app that we have, which is public, unprotected. Otherwise, you can, of course, propose, uh, protect the content that you have and, and only have the branded app used by people that, uh, that, uh, that you want to. Thank you for your time. Thank you for trying Dartfish. And uh, do not hesitate to get in touch with us if you have any further questions or if you want further training, as was the case for Marco. Thank you.